Hi ladies and gentlemen, Baron here. So we're going to be looking at the Fair Mile D Motor Torpedo Boat or the Dog Boat. Now for you Brits out there, is it Fair Mile? I, I, I don't know. Or is it Family? That sounds more French to me and my pronunciation is normally rather shite, but we do our best. Ladies and gentlemen, War Thunder is at Gamescom right now. They've been streaming today. They've been showing off a lot of stuff. We saw some PT boats basically drive in a line and fire off some torpedoes. They showed the Project 1124 kind of firing rockets. It was more or less just showing them in the ocean and firing weapons. Not a whole lot to see there. There wasn't enough. There wasn't like, um, you know, versing each other or anything like that, which I was a little bit disappointed in, but you know, you never know. There, there might be more in a bit. So we're going to be talking about the Fair Mile D. We're just going to call it the FD. Actually, we're going to call it the Dog Boat. So, throughout 1941, engineers of Britain's Royal Navy were busy developing and testing new types of gunboats and torpedo gunboats in order to design a countermeasure against the German Schnellboots, which are actually really cool. You should look them up. Fast torpedo boats that were interfering with the operations of British military and merchant vessels in the English Channel. The requirements advanced for the vessel were perfectly clear. The boat was intended as a universal platform to carry powerful armaments of various types, and it also had to possess a speed of no less than 30 knots, so as to at least stand a chance of counteracting the fast-moving German naval predators, the Schnellboots. In the course of testing, the shipbuilders came to the conclusion that the perfect platform would be a boat of an angular bow and stern, but also with a rounded bottom that could house four screw propellers. This design was also compatible with military manufacturing of the time. Boats of the series were being produced and upgraded from earlier Fair Miles at small wharfs along the shores of Great Britain. And so the Fair Mile D Universal Gun Torpedo Boat was born and immediately dubbed Dog Boat by the sailors. This nickname was clearly inspired by the model letter, but as it turned out, the Fair Mile became a true guard dog of the English Channel. Hmm. Let's see what you did there. The Fair Mile D was one of the most widely produced boats of the Second World War. The various production series differed primarily in their armament. The cannon and machine gun weaponry was soon significantly improved. Torpedo tubes and depth charges began to appear on the boat, and many gunboats were modernized into torpedo gunboats. Today's guest is the Fair Mile D early series motor torpedo boat. It is a rather large vessel measuring 35 meters in length, in length, equipped with four engines with a combined power of 5,000 HP. I almost said hit points. Ha! Horsepower. 5,000 horsepower, providing a maximum speed of 32 knots, a little less than 60 kilometers per hour. The boat was armed with one automatic 40 millimeter two pounder QF Mark II C cannon on the bow, twin 20 millimeter Orlikon Mark V machine guns, or kind of cannons, on the stern. Two twin high caliber um, .5 Vickers Mark III machine guns and two twin rifle caliber .303 Vickers No. 5 Mark I machine guns on the bridge. This version of the boat carried no torpedoes but had a pair of Mark VII depth charges. That kind of asks... Uh, I, I want to know, are we going to be carrying depth charges? Will depth charges be functional? Every now and then they put in dev blogs like some historical tidbits, but that we never really see in action. So I'm curious to see if, uh, you know, that may be the case here or not. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, in War Thunder, the early series Fair D is a floating gun battery. Her main strength is her automated cannons, whose ammunition almost completely consists of high-explosive fragmentation shells. Her three cannons provide good fire coverage and maximum efficiency when firing at both sides. The machine guns also provide decent support to the cannons. There are a whole eight of them. The boat has average speed, low maneuverability, and no armor. Only the gunners have bulletproof defenses. So the Fair Miles captain has to take care of the safety of the crew and the vessel as a whole. On the War Thunder Battlefield, the Fair Mile takes the role of heavy fire support boat. Take care of the Brit on your team, and the cannons and machine guns of the Fair Mile will save you and your teammates when you need it most. So this thing sounds like it's going to be fantastic at shooting down aircraft, which just like bristling with anti-aircraft power. You know, eight machine guns, you've got 20 millimeter cannons, and you've got the 40 millimeter cannon as well, which is automatic. So I'm wondering if that's the pom-pom or not. The pom-pom, which... 
I'm somewhat familiar with from one of my favorite tanks on World of or World of Tanks rather. So, um, seeing the footage right now, uh, the hype. I'm wondering how the hype ship is doing for War Thunder. I put out a video saying that I think this would be a fun game mode, and it got a lot of flack. Haha, <laughs> punny, right? No, but it did 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 get a lot of flack because I think right now. Many, many people are disappointed because all of us are looking forward to, all of us, myself included, would be looking forward to playing some of the biggest ships out there. Now, would that be the most fun gameplay? Who knows, right? It is kind of pure conjecture at this point, but we have seen World of Warships pull off big ships to where they are entertaining. Um, War Thunder, obviously a different style of game, but obviously they're going to be compared because there really aren't too many other games in this category out uh, to be played right now. I was going to say out on the internet, out in the world right now. What do we have? World of Warships. We got battle stations like Midway and Battle Station Pacific, which is from forever ago and are, comp and are pretty outdated when you compare them to like a World of Warships or even what we're seeing here with these smaller boats. But the Fair Mile D looks pretty cool. Um, and we're going to have some Gamescom 2016 footage in the background just kind of to talk over here. But it makes you wonder right now. I think I think War Thunder... This is just my personal theory. I wonder if War Thunder was pushed or felt rather pressured to have something to show at Gamescom. Now they showed off tanks. What was it like? Was it was at Igromir and was it like a it was like two years ago maybe, Igromir tank footage, maybe even three years ago. I'm not entirely sure on the dates. I'm no historian when it comes to that. Even though I should be familiar with it, I just feel like I've been playing tanks forever. Um, and War Thunder was initially a planes game, and that's kind of the core base. I think are still the pilots, um, and I think that like the. Tanks came in, but they didn't really take to... I don't know how many they took from World of Tanks, which may have been an objective or something, one of the goals that they were going for. But anyway, we're not going to get too much into that because that's, that's a lot of like my own personal uh, curiosities and opinions, and I think we'll avoid that at least for now, but at some point we might get into that. But um, the reasons as to why we kind of have these small ships and even... Um, in the Gamescom footage, there's there's nothing too wow, you know, at least not yet. In my, in my opinion, that's my opinion. Some people may have gone out there and be like, damn, that's freaking awesome, you know, and that's and that's possible. But the Fairmile D looks cool. Honestly, out of the three ships that we've seen so far in the dev blogs, I would say that the Fairmile D definitely, definitely looks the coolest, and the weaponry is the most interesting to me. The PT boat has torpedoes. But um, it looks relatively lightly armored. Project 1124 is basically a T-24, or excuse me, a T-34 in Katusha on the ocean. Uh, but Fair Mile D would have to be my favorite one so far. I think it looks the coolest. I'm, I'm very excited to play it, right? Um, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering how many of you are kind of like opposed to this crazy idea. I know it's going to sound crazy that... World of Warships has big ships. War Thunder's going to have smaller ships. Why not both? Is that is that a crazy idea? And here's another crazy idea. And, you know, I may take some flack for this. But this is something I use in my personal life on a daily basis. Because the facts are, we are, I think it's part of the human experience that we are going to be disappointed regularly. Right? And there's this saying that I've heard recently that, uh, that I've really taken to heart. We cannot necessarily control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to it, what we do, how we carry ourselves. So it's going to be very, very easy to allow your disappointment to be like, this War Thunder shit is going to suck, right? But that's, that's just weakness right there. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. What change are you going to be able to do by allowing that weakness to take over and cloud your judgment. Now, they've said that the closed beta test, they're going to see how it goes and whether or not they're going to get big ships. This is going to be something that may blow your mind. This is a free-to-play game, right? So they put money into it ahead of time. 
well, I guess all game development do. They're going to put money into it ahead of time, and people are going to be able to play it for free, right? So if there's not as many people playing a new mode like War Thunder Ships, or as some of you have joked, War Thunder Coast Guard, and there are some merits to that joke, it is, it is somewhat amusing. But if it doesn't go well, you're never going to see what big ships in War Thunder are going to be like because there's going to be no point for a studio who first needs to sustain itself and secondarily is driven by the idea of producing a profit. And in so doing, like, we'll never get to play battleships if the if what seems to be this minority opinion but a very heavily vocalized minority opinion carries over and kind of dictates the development process of War Thunder ships. We'll never get... We'll never get the Sharn Horse, the Turpets, the Yamatos, the Iowas. Shit, we might not even get cruisers, but I think at this point we're going to get smaller ships, and it seems like we might get up to destroyers. Um, I think cruisers would be really, really good. And I've, and I've said in another video that I think that we could easily have a system whereby you create an event, a weekly event, or something like that, maybe on weekends when there's going to be a lot of people that could go on to make the event work, but where you'd have either a multi-crewed player-controlled ship where people control different gun systems uh, and defense systems and have to fight against swarms of aircraft and smaller ships, and it could be kind of this, like, kill the behemoth type thing, you know? And, I mean, that's, that's just an idea where you could get maybe a battleship or a capital ship, that experience of being the smaller ship and dealing with that a little earlier. Um, you know, a swarm of like 16 people versus three or four that are defending the ship. It could be interesting. They, they, War Thunder has been relatively creative in some of the game modes that they've come out. Anyway, so that is a bit of kind of B-roll Gamescom footage. And, um, you know, I'd say that Gamescom 2016, um, looking to see more. It's still relatively early in it. We might be seeing more. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys... This is some food for thought, right? Am I disappointed that I'm not going to be able to drop into a battleship or a player-controlled aircraft carrier and take off in my own plane from a player-controlled aircraft carrier? That's some of the stuff I've been hoping and wondering about since, oh, 2013. When I, when I would take screen captures, I'd fly around maps and identify all the ships and all the tanks that were AI controlled at that point, man. And that is like three years ago. Trust me. I've been I've been hoping and praying for epicness in this for, for a while now. Um, but you know what? I, I'd say that the best approach is constructive criticism, not not threatening boycotting by like, you know what? Like like being that like prima donna where like everything revolves around us. I mean, it, it, as a collective, it definitely revolves around us, but on an individual basis, like, well, if it doesn't have this, I'm not even going to try it out. It's not worth my time. And I'm going to use that accent because I just disagree with that opinion, man. Take a stand. Be strong. Don't give in to that just weak selfishness and, like, make a fucking change, boys. That's what I want to see. I want War Thunder ships to go so well that they cannot help but dump more time and money into developing capital ships. But if it doesn't, hey, there's always World of Warships, right?